Hi, Rich Muller again from the Shade Tree CNC. Today's project is going to be a big book bank. And this was originally inspired by a video I saw uh, last January on the Stumpy Nubs uh, website. Uh, if you, uh, I suggest you take a look at his uh, video to see how this uh, differs from the one that I have designed here. Uh, you want to check his January uh, issue of uh, titled uh, CNC, The Big Buck Bank. And uh, I would follow on with the, with the YouTube uh, video as well, because he goes into deep uh, discussion to how he made his bank, and you'll see how this one differs. So let's get on with the build. Okay, in SolidWorks we go ahead and design a uh, kind of a mortise and tendon assembly to where the front and back fit snugly into slots in the top and bottom pieces. And then we do rabbits on the end pieces. So we end up with only six pieces for our box and a seventh for a, an insert on the top. Now we went ahead and uh, we're going to engrave uh, the dollar bill on the front and back of the, uh, the box. So let's uh, start by uh, cutting out the blanks and getting ready for uh, the CNC. Here we'll go ahead and cut all our pieces to length, or actually width, and then we'll uh, take a few measurements and then come back and put our uh, sled on and cut the pieces to length. Okay, so when I program uh, my CNC, I always put the origin dead center of the part. That way I always know where I can start and I can home my machine basically to that center should I ever lose my place and start over. Okay, so here we're going to cut both the uh, slots in both the top and the bottom. And so we just show the CNC, uh, not a whole lot of excitement here, but that's the way it goes when you're watching the CNC. Okay, so we'll park the CNC for a minute and we'll go ahead and uh, check the parts for fit.
Yeah, we cut these slots so that they were only about ten thousandths larger than the piece of wood. So they're they're going to fit really snug. And so we're going to trim one down a little bit because they're, they're just a tad longer than the slot. Okay, with that uh, tested, and it looks like it's going to be a good deal, we're going to uh, pop the first piece out and we're going to basically put in the second piece and run the program all over again. And of course, there's always that inevitable time when you have just have to sand everything. Okay, so we're going to do a dry fit here and get ready to do the end pieces so that we know that they'll dry fit. Here we're putting an OG round over on the, uh, what we're going to call now the base. And then we'll follow that with a change of bit and go to a chamfer bit and we'll chamfer the top. Now a lot of this uh, V carve was done, uh, the artwork was done in Corel Draw, and then it was imported into uh, Scorchworks uh, Effingrave. And if you want to know more about Effingrave, check out my last video where I went in a little more depth of uh, how to set up and program in Effingrave. Here I just engraved the top and the uh, insert uh, via Efren Graves um, uh, v car function. Here we're trimming up the end pieces so that uh, they've got a, uh, a reduction in material, uh, basically a lap joint. And so, or a rabbit joint, and we're going to fit that inside. So we'll have a half inch material on the inside of the box and a quarter inch lip on the outside of the box. It didn't quite fit, so we took it back and kissed it one more time with the uh, saw.
Here we're using that uh, F engrave program to uh, um, decarve the uh, decoration in the top of the insert. Notice that the material is three quarters of an inch thick and when I'm finished I'm going to run it through my planer to take it down to a quarter inch. Here we've switched bits and now we're running uh, the profile that we programmed in SolidWorks using HMS Express's plugin for generating G code. And again, more sanding. We'll let the CNC run while we do the sanding. So here we're going to use the um, program from uh, Scorchworks that uh, does a image to G-code. And it's pretty simple. You load, a, load an image, set the uh, uh, origin to the center, and in my case, I set this to 60 degree bit, and then limited the depth to 50 thousandths. Went ahead and uh, told it to uh, carve, and it takes only just a matter of a minute or two to actually generate the, uh, the G-code for this. So we were done with that, we saved the G-code, now we'll basically bring in the back image, verify all our settings are the same, and again, uh, I used a 60 degree bit on this, and we went ahead and ran that G-code. Now because SolidWorks has a G-code viewer, I went ahead and uh, loaded the files so I could see what it looked like and run a back plot so that I could actually see what the uh, G-code was actually going to do. Do a quick scan here of all of the uh, steps in the G-code and we'll do the same for the, for the back of the bill just to verify that everything looks good.
So here we got a 60 degree uh, bit, half inch in diameter, and we'll just go ahead and, and uh, engrave those uh, front and back faces of the box. So here's what it looks like before we put any uh, uh, stain on it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to coat this with uh, shellac first before we try and add any of the color. Here's the back, same deal. Spared you all the CNC watching time, so we'll get on to the finishing. So off camera, I went ahead and stained all of the top bottoms and side pieces with a dark stain. Okay, so we're ready to start assembly. The first thing that we did was we put some uh, T-nuts in. They look like that. And basically you just press them in. So that gives us threaded holes here. So now we'll go ahead and put a little glue on the base. Go ahead and assemble the sides. Put the side in and push it down. Make sure we got the right side up. Put the back in. Press it down. Now we'll go ahead and put a little glue in the top piece. Head over and set that in. Press that together. Okay. And now we'll take a little glue on this inside.
And there we have it. A big buck bank. All engraved. Blue up there. And we'll give it a coat of wax and we'll be good to go. Okay, just a, a note. We basically took some of this creative paint. We dabbed a little bit on of it and then quickly wiped it off. And then we did the same thing in black on the opposite side. And then we put a coat of shellac over the whole thing. So if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. And above all, share with your friends. And please leave me a comment. All of that helps my ratings at YouTube. Thanks for watching.